themes of inconstancy, stress, not self. We usually hear these pretty early on when we learn of the Buddhist teachings. And they are important themes in the teachings. But then here we are sitting and meditating, trying to get a state of constant concentration, sense of ease, pleasure, bliss even, in the concentration, and get the mind under our control. Get the results of our concentration under our control. So in a way we're pushing against the three themes of what are often called the three characteristics. And it's important that we do this. The Buddha didn't ask you simply to accept what he had to say. He says, test it. And one good way of testing the principle of inconstancy is to try to make your mind as constant as possible. A good way of testing the principle of stress is to see how much ease you can get as you focus the mind. And a way of testing the principle of not-self is to see how much control you can have. Because the, many times, again and again, the Buddha brings up the issue of control as the central part of self. I mean, if something is really yours, you have control over it. And he never said that the, say, the five aggregates are totally stressful, totally inconstant, totally out of control. As he once pointed out, if there were no pleasure to be found in the aggregates, we wouldn't be attached to them. We wouldn't cling to them. There is some pleasure here. But there are different kinds of pleasure. And what he wants us to do is to drop some of the sensual pleasure that we try to find in the aggregates and develop a different kind of pleasure, the pleasure that comes from getting the mind into the level of form, i.e. the form of the body while we're sitting here. How much pleasure can you have by inhabiting your whole body? And you allow the breath to come in and go out in a comfortable way. That pleasure forms the, the nourishment for the path. Without that pleasure, the path would run out of gas. Things would dry up. And John Fuang once mentioned the principle of the rapture that comes from good concentration. He said it's a lubricant that keeps the motor from seizing up. So we're pushing against the three characteristics. Of course, they're going to push back. And we have to be prepared for that and learn from it to find exactly where are the limitations, how far can concentration take you, and particularly how far can you take the concentration. Because you'll find some days that it goes smoothly and no problem at all, and other days it seems like it's totally out of whack, that you wonder if you, even if you have ever been a meditator. It has its ups and downs like this. The important thing is that you try to make your input in the present moment as constant as possible. Because another lesson we learned by training the mind in this way, of giving it a task to do consistently, is you begin to see that sometimes not everything is determined by what you're doing in the present moment. Sometimes there are things coming in from the past. Anyone who's had several children will notice this principle immediately. You raise the kids the same way, but they turn out differently. Makes you stop and think, well, maybe each kid comes in with a different load of past karma. They're coming from different directions. And the same principle applies with your own mind. At different days, different periods of time, even within one meditation setting, you find that past karma of different kinds will come up. So that focusing on the breath. For one five-minute period will get results, and for the next five-minute period doesn't seem to get any results at all. But you're doing the same thing. 
So that's the other lesson you're learning, is the principle of past karma having some influence. When you find that your meditation has these ups and downs, you have to be very careful. Once you've tested to make sure that what you're doing in the present moment is as skillful as you know, is then try to keep on doing the skillful thing and not let yourself get discouraged by the, the sloughs and not get careless during the, the high periods. Try to keep your practice on an even keel. It's only by continuing to put good input into the present moment will you have a chance to have some good past karma to rely on. If you let your present mood depend on the results of your meditation, you're setting yourself up for problems. In other words, suppose you have a stretch of old past karma that's not particularly good showing itself, and you let yourself get discouraged by that, that sets you into a tailspin. If you're riding along in a really nice period and you start getting lazy and complacent, that's unskillful karma as well. You always want to make sure that no matter what, how bad the situation is outside, you always try to put the skillful approach into the present moment. Add as much skillful energy, as much skillful attention as you can. In other words, you have to try to be as constant as you can. Even though the results may be inconstant, don't let your efforts depend on their inconstancy. This way, try to find your own inner resources. What can you call on inside yourself to encourage yourself, to energize your practice, even through the bad periods? The periods when things don't seem to make any sense. Just stay with your sense of awareness. Try to be as still as possible and just watch. That way you don't pick up the, the diseases that come, or the germs that come from, say, a bad session of meditation, or the germs that can come from a good session. One of John Fuang's students once complained that why is it that yesterday my meditation was so good I thought it would never change into anything bad? And today it's like I never meditated ever before. And he says, well, it's the mind is like the body. Wear different sets of clothes from one day to the next. And just watch that. Remember, you're, se you're separate from the clothes. The results are one thing, the observer is something else. The part of the mind that's deciding what to do next, that's something else as well. Keep them separate. Learn to find some source within yourself for that deep kind of well. You know, there are wells in the world whose output doesn't depend on the, the amount of rainfall that comes. They go very deep. There's one theory that they actually come from the water actually comes from the earthquake faults. It doesn't come from the rain, it comes from a chemical reaction down in the faults, which is constant. And you can draw on these wells during the dry periods, during the wet periods, and their output is constant. So try to develop the kind of attitude towards the meditation that allows you to keep drawing on that deep well. So whether the results are going through a drought or they're going through a flood, you can develop consistency in your meditation. And as you do that, you start learning a lot of important lessons. Remember here, we're not here just to enjoy the meditation, we're here to learn from it. And one of the things we're going to learn is Exactly how constant can you make the mind? How much pleasure can you get out of these aggregates? How much control do you have over them? So don't be surprised when they push back, because you're pushing them. And so be willing to learn what lessons they have to teach. <laughs>